now let us look at two very important facts about the stress intensity factor. Uh, remember, stress intensity factor is the only characterizing parameter of the crack tip stress fields as well as the displacement fields very close to the tip of the sharp crack. So uh, it has to be a sharp crack. It has to uh, uh, linear elasticity, isotropic linear elasticity has to be valid. And in that case, very close to the crack tip, the dominant stress field is given by a single parameter. The amplitude of the dominant stress field is given by a single parameter, which is the stress intensity factor. Remember, for both mode 1 and mode 2, uh, the definitions were like this. For mode 1, it was limit r tends to 0, root 2 pi r sigma theta theta at x2 equal to 0. For mode 2, the definition was limit r tends to 0 root 2 pi r sigma r theta at x2 equal to 0. These were our definitions of uh, uh, definitions of the stress intensity factors. And from here, what you see is that the stress intensity factor has units of stress times length. So, uh, we call it the SIF the stress intensity factor. So a possible unit of SIF could be MPA root meter. So this is the unit that we will generally use. Derivatives of this are also possible. So this is the easy point about fracture toughness. It has units of MPA root meter. Uh, and um, the, the other important fact is, uh, if you look at the stress fields, then uh, as I was discussing in the last class, all information about loading and geometry is conveyed to the stress field at the crack tip through the stress intensity factor. It's the only single parameter that uh, conveys information about loading. So it is a loading parameter for the crack tip. And it's only one loading parameter is enough for a mode 1 or a mode 2 or a mode 3 crack tip. Which means that uh, we, can, we can envisage a situation where this parameter reaches a critical value at which the crack starts to grow. Since there's only one parameter through which you can control the crack tip stress fields and since the crack tip stress fields will determine when the crack moves, this one parameter has to have a critical value at which the crack starts to grow. So uh, it is a bit like uh, stress and yield stress. Stress is something that you apply to the body. It's dependent on the loads that you apply and yield stress is a material parameter. So we can envisage that K1 or K2 or K3 or the SIFs are the loads that we apply at the crack tip and its critical values are known as K1C, K2C or K2. 3C, which are the fracture toughnesses of the material. These are material parameters. So what we have is crack will grow when K1 is greater than K1C, K2 is greater than K2C or K3 is greater than K3C. So these are experimental parameters, experimentally determined parameters. These are material parameters and these are analogous to, as I was saying, analogous to yield stress Whereas this is an applied parameter, this is what you have applied at the crack tip. This conveys the information about the loading on the body, and that has to be uh, that has to be greater than or equal to K1C for the crack to grow, or K2C for the crack to grow in mode one. Uh, sorry, in mode two. Uh, though it is assumed to be a property of the material, it is not always so uh, because of various reasons. Uh, the reasons we will go through one by one uh, later in the later in the course. But as long as isotropic linear uh, elasticity is valid, uh, the we can we can think of a situation where we load the crack with K1, and when K1 becomes equal to K1C, the crack starts to grow okay uh, the fracture toughness is 
a property of the material. It's important to remember and has to be determined separately through experiments. Whereas K1, the SIR, is an applied load on the crack tip. It's not a load. It has units of stress times root length. So it's not uh, a load whose, whose uh, uh, units are in stress, but it's, it's, it's a complicated quantity, but it clubs, it bundles the effect of everything else other than that that are applied on the body. Every geometric and, and, and loading uh, conditions is bundled into this one single parameter, which has to reach uh, the fracture toughness in order for the crack to grow. This is strictly true only for a linear elastic isotropic material and for a sharp crack. But uh, for the time being, um, we will consider this to be the design, uh, the design principle behind um, fracture-based design. Just like in yield-based design, we ensure that the stresses never exceed the yield stress. In fracture-based design, based on linear elastic fracture mechanics, we will assume that the stress intensity factor never reaches, never, re never exceeds the fracture toughness in that particular mode. Okay, uh, experimentally, though not uh, not always, most of the time K1C is the lowest of the three critical stress intensity factors or the, crit or the fracture toughnesses of the material. So in most cases, when fracture toughness of a material is specified, it is K1C that is specified uh, because that's always uh, lesser than K2C and K3C. Uh, okay, so uh, this uh, completes our discussion on the Williams solution and the significance of the stress intensity factor. Uh, we will start with looking at how to determine the stress intensity factor in the next, uh, in, in the classes next week.